Pete Roberts here. Welcome to 28 Tonight. In the news business, one of the most cherished assignments is covering the triumphant return of a homegrown hero. Featured on tonight's uh, telecast is cellist Nathaniel Rosen, winner of first prize at Moscow's International Tchaikovsky Competition on the 4th of July this year. Rosen was born in Pasadena, California, and is the first American instrumentalist to win first prize since Van Cliburn took the gold medal in the piano competitions of the first Tchaikovsky event in 1958. Nathaniel Rosen is currently the principal cellist with the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. Southern Californians will be familiar with Rosen's career as principal cellist with the Los Angeles Chamber Orchestra from 1972 until last year. We have asked Ernest Fleischmann, executive director of the Los Angeles Philharmonic Association, to be with us this evening to interview Nathaniel Rosen. Well, Nick, uh, although you were born Nathaniel, your friends call you Nick. So for this interview, may I call you Nick? Nick? I would prefer it. Good. But strange as it may seem, there are some people, I think, out in the audience watching us who've never heard you play. So what better way to start us off than by playing something? Lock. Like... I'm game. Good.
Well, that, appropriately enough, was a nocturne by Tchaikovsky and the excellent accompanist whom we caught merely the slightest of glimpses was Doris Stevenson. Thank you, Doris. Nick, um, the whole thing about becoming a performer has to do uh, with genes, possibly with a musical family. You had both those, I take it, but maybe you should talk first of all about your teachers. Um, they were here. Your earliest teacher was who? Eleanor Schoenfeld, who teaches uh, in Pasadena, which is my hometown. And uh, I worked with her right from the beginning for seven years until I went to the Piatigorsky master class at USC. And uh, she taught me many wonderful things, not only uh, about actually playing the cello, but about the uh, discipline of, of, of practicing and involving oneself with uh, dedication to, to goal. What about musicianship? What about a way of looking at music, style and so on? Where well, did you get that from? Well, I began to get that with uh, Miss Schoenfeld. And uh, then uh, when I became a member of the Piatigorsky master class when I was 13. When was that? 13? Yes. That's very young. Well, well yeah. he had heard me uh, uh, a year previously in the Coleman chamber music auditions, and he remembered me, and uh, I became his student and uh, began to work with a new kind of concentration. Mm -hmm. You had played chamber music before that, in, with your father even. That's right. I received uh, my, my first and actually most consistent uh, experience in chamber music in an informal Friday evening string quartet with my father and several friends. We went through much quartet literature. I think that's wonderful training for uh, anyone. Uh, now, from Miss Schoenfeld, you went on to Piotr Gorski, and then whom I suppose one couldn't have a greater teacher. I stayed with him for, for many years. Uh, he was my greatest friend, and, uh, and I'm, I'm only uh, sorry that he's not here to share this great thing that has happened. I, I know he wished for you everything that has happened to you so far, and I somehow don't think Grisha is ever not with us. He was such a superhuman person. You virtually lived, uh, virtually lived in his house, didn't you, for many years? Well, I uh, not exactly lived there, but I certainly was a frequent visitor. And um, therefore you shared not only in the, the kind of training he had to give you, but in his life. Uh, he must have been a man to pass on n a great deal of knowledge of living, of coping, um, particularly with musical situations to you. Is there anything in particular that strikes you about that? Well, we just discussed everything when we were together, from sports, basketball, and chess, and tennis, uh, to uh, philosophy and ways of looking at, uh, at life and coping with uh, difficulties in, in music and career, and uh, it was just like a terrific grounding, mm -hmm. just sort of of the whole, of my whole life, that is where the grounding is, really, is, was my work with him. Now, he was a great chess player, how about your chess? My chess is uh, not very good at all, but his wasn't either, actually. <laughs> but he always talked about it. <laughs> yes, he was a fair chess player. His wife is a, is a marvelous chess player. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, from this, I deduce that you even beat him on occasion. Or did you dare to? Well, we, we didn't really play that much uh, together chess. We, we talked about it. <laughs> mm. Well, but that, that was part of the life's experience. Sure. And, and you feel that also made you, uh, helped to make you into the kind of artist you are today. It, it's not just the technical aspects, not just the musical aspect. He always said uh, he would sometimes apologize in a way for talking a lot. But then he would say, I'm not wasting your time by doing this. All of these things are very important. 